All right, let's talk about how to predict whether or not a double displacement reaction will occur. Being that double displacement reactions are a reaction between two compounds producing two compounds, what you're going to see is that you'll find that occasionally, sometimes a solid is produced or, or consumed. If it's produced, that's called a precipitate. Or you might get a gas, or you might get a molecular liquid forming. And if anything's happened, we say a reaction happens because it's a change of matter which shows us that stuff is going on. So we generally say, in other words, that a double displacement reaction is assumed to occur unless everything in both the products and the reactants is aqueous and dissolves in water, in which case we say nothing really changed. We just had ions become more ion, or well, switch places with more ions. So an example of this would be right here, where two aqueous things react to produce one thing that's aqueous and one thing that's solid. Because not everything is aqueous, we say yes, the reaction successfully occurred. Whereas here, everything is aqueous, so we say no, the reaction did not occur. How will you be determining this? Well, keep in mind that on the actual exam, you will have the solubility table that looks like this, and then a variety of questions that look like this, and it doesn't tell you whether it's aqueous or not. So that is something that we will show you how to determine. All right, let's talk about how you can tell whether or not these reactions will successfully occur. For these double displacement reactions, which I recognize because the reactants are compounds and so are the products, I need to use the solubility table to determine whether or not they can occur. Do not use the activity series because the activity series mentions pure elements, which you will notice are conspicuously absent from the reactants and products. So. How do you use this to determine whether or not this can actually occur? Remember that if everything can dissolve in water, if everything is soluble, aka aqueous, we would mark everything with an AQ and then we would say no reaction because it would just mean ions, 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 ions everywhere if everything is aqueous. If anything anywhere on either side is anything other than aqueous. Any non-aqueous anything means the reaction occurs. That's it. If everything's aqueous, no reaction. Otherwise, reaction. So how do you figure that out? Look here. You'll notice most of the stuff on this list is anions. Like these are all anions, these are all anions. So generally when you look at things, you want to look at the anions to tell whether or not it's going to be soluble. Because if it is soluble, you mark it as aqueous. If it is insoluble, it does not dissolve in water, and you mark it as solid. So, let's begin here. Will this reaction occur? We look at the sodium and the sulfide. We pick out sulfide, the anion, right here. And we notice that sulfides are generally not going to dissolve in water, so generally they're marked as solid, unless paired with a group 1 ion or ammonium. So we look at sulfide, you also notice there's a sulfide here and the product side. So on the reactant side, it's paired with sodium. Sodium actually is a group 1. How do you know that? Group 1 is referring to group 1 of the periodic table. There's sodium, it's in group 1. So any of these things paired with a sulfide will dissolve in water. In other words, it's telling us that this is soluble. I'll put an AQ next to it. This sulfide, on the other hand, again, sulfides are generally not soluble, which means they're generally solid, and iron is not one of the exceptions, so we're going to put this as solid because it is insoluble and will not dissolve in water. So I didn't know this reaction is going to happen, but I'm going to do the rest of these just for completion's sake. The other two are both nitrates, iron nitrate and uh, sodium nitrate, so we look at nitrate right here, and we notice that nitrate is always soluble in water, with no exceptions at all. That means nitrates are always aqueous with no exceptions at all. Now, since we saw something here that is solid, we say, yes, the reaction will occur. That's my favorite abbreviation for reaction right there. We move on and do the same thing here. Sometimes some of these cations, such as ammonium, actually do appear on the list. But for consistency's sake, we'll just always look at the anions. Bromine. Where do you find bromine? It's right here under the halides, or halides as it's also called. So halides are soluble with these exceptions, silver, lead, or mercury. Well, that's not one of the exceptions, so soluble it is. Oops, sorry, a Q is what I should put there. And then for this one right here, oh, here we go. For the other bromide, we're going to say, is that soluble? 
since we were looking at bromine, oh look, lead is an exception. So even though halides are generally aqueous, with lead it's solid. So we already know this reaction is happening, but let's finish the rest of these. Halides. Chlorine is also a halide, which means if you put it with lead, it's soluble. Or sorry, it's solid. Whereas halides with ammonia, ammonium were earlier stated to be soluble, which means aqueous. So soluble, insoluble. So anyway, we have two things that are not soluble, so we say yes, reaction. Yes, this reaction happens because we don't have everything aqueous. Moving on. Chlorate. We find chlorate on the list. And it is right here. And you'll notice it is soluble with no exceptions. So that means this is soluble and we put aqueous. And this one is soluble, we put aqueous. Hydroxide. We look at hydroxide and we note that it is not soluble, so it's generally solid with these exceptions. Okay, so is this an exception? Barium. Yes, barium is an exception, so we put aqueous. Because although these are generally solid, barium is an exception. Is potassium an exception? Group 1 is an exception. Potassium is in group 1. So yes, this is also an exception, which means it's also aqueous. Or I should say, it's an exception to hydroxide, usually not being able to dissolve in water. So anyway, it's aqueous. Everything's aqueous, therefore we say no reaction. All right, next. Nitrates and chromate. So let's look up nitrates and chromates. Nitrates are soluble with no exceptions. So we're going to put aqueous on both of these. Chromates. We check out chromates. We find them. We look, look, look. There's the chromate. Solid. Not able to dissolve unless paired with one of these things. So we check. Lithium chromate. Ah, lithium's in group one. How do I know? There's lithium. It's in group one. So... Although chromates usually are solid, it's aqueous because we have an exception here with the lithium. So I'm going to put aqueous. And then for the magnesium, chromates are usually insoluble. Magnesium is an exception. So it's soluble, aqueous. Aqueous all around, no reaction. Moving on. These ones. Hydrogen carbonate is right here. Hydrogen carbonate is soluble with no exceptions. So hydrogen carbonate is here, and we put aqueous because it's soluble with no exceptions, and we put aqueous because it's soluble with no exceptions. As for halides, how do I know it's a halide? Right here, halides include chlorine as an anion. So it is soluble with only these exceptions, silver, lead, and mercury. Silver, lead, and mercury, oh, there we go. So this is an exception to chlorides generally being soluble. So since it is not soluble, we put solid. Copper is not one of the exceptions. Copper chloride is soluble according to that chart because again, they're soluble unless paired with these and you'll notice copper is not on the exceptions list. So we have something not soluble. So we say, yes, this reaction occurs. Finally, we go through these ones, HCl. So that's a halide. And we notice hydrogen's not on the exceptions list, so it's soluble. I put aqueous. Sodium hydroxide. Hydroxides are generally not soluble, according to this. However, group 1 is an exception, and sodium is a group 1, so we put aqueous. Sodium chloride. There's the chloride. Sodium's not an exception, so aqueous. We all know salt dissolves in water anyway, and H2O. But wait, where do you find H2O on here? I don't see H2O anywhere on this list. And the answer is, it doesn't matter because you need to use some common sense. Come on guys, H2O is water. Water's a liquid. So you put liquid. Or if it's really hot conditions, you can call it a gas. Or if it's really cold conditions, you call it a solid. Either way, you never refer to H2O as aqueous. H2O is never aqueous. So because of that, we can say if H2O is a product or reactant, you have something in there that isn't aqueous, which means Yes, the reaction occurs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it.